So we can see on this boulder, the first boulder, the, the zone hold is, is very low, actually. So I'm, I'm predicting a, a tough start on this. It's going to be your third hold on the boulder, is it? Yeah, the start position is very oh, difficult. Got that hold. Okay. Yeah, so fourth. So it's a, it's a small undercut, this. It has his right hand on. Uh, there is a, a, a little blocker as well. So it's a positive crimp, but they've, they've made it much smaller by putting... Whoa, by yeah, put another small uh, screw on holding to okay. make it much more difficult to, to adjust on. So, but he did manage to match that with, yeah, seemingly not too many problems. Yeah, I mean, Etienne here's flashed to the zone. So, yeah, okay. What do we know about Etienne? 20 years old, from Brigné. Definitely not pronouncing that right. I think this is only his uh, second uh, senior competition. He did the first round of the European Cup earlier in the year, back at the end of August. Sorry, end of um, April. April. Yeah. April. Yeah, in Austria. So he gets on his second attempt. I don't know how he's consumed three minutes already. That's flown by. It has. Yeah, only his second attempt, this. Yeah. I mean, he must have felt confident on his first go that he yeah. could get back to the same position. Um, just saw a bit of a shot of the uh, of the next hold. Ah, yeah, okay, you can see how aggressive that red crimp is. looking better. Okay. Nice. Yeah. Okay, let's see where he... Okay. Cool. Uh, yeah, I, I think it's like he ripped off that red crimp a little bit. Stepping out onto the map representing Australia. And something had led me to believe that it would be only European competitors here. And it was a circuit based on geographic location. But no, we've got an Aussie in the building. Welcome. Welcome to Aiden. See how he gets on with his first move to the zone. Yeah, Etienne I mean, uh, made it look quite casual. Yeah. Um, maybe a little bit taller than this athlete. Or maybe he's just a bit more springy, like jumping into that position. Ooh, I'm going for a high foot method here. Oh, that looks... I mean... Slightly deceptive on screen uh, how shallow the the right hand hold is to start. Okay. Uh, okay, oh, yeah. that's a better that's a angle. angle. Yeah. Okay, excellent. Oh, that's a great shot there. Yeah. See really that see foot that. hold. Yeah. But yeah, struggling to. Yeah, this must be very frustrating for him. Okay, trying nice. to go much slower this time. So he, we don't see his left leg, so he'll have to touch the... He must have touched it. Yeah, okay. Ah, oh, excellent. Great that he's found a method. But now it's... Yeah. He's going to jump on for one last attempt. Come on, Aiden. Yes. Nice. Five seconds. Okay. Yeah, he knows it's not enough and he's just dropped yeah, off there. He should be... It's not come up on the score sheet yet, but he, he's... Seventh attempt there. Okay, next out is uh, Rhys Conlon. As a senior competitor. Then we're going to get the first glimpse of men's two. This young man's flashed the start. Yeah, again, an, an, yeah, early, no. an early zone. Yeah, absolutely. Mm. So certainly from the, uh, from the screen, it's difficult to see where you might hold the, the starting hole. So absolutely, they're, really, they're kind of camouflaged, aren't they? They are, they are. The, and then apart from that, the rest of the, of the hold is just very slippy. Yeah. So the, the dual yeah. text. So it's, yeah, very poor the start right hand hold. Yeah. In fact, I, I took some pictures on my phone so I could reference them. Yeah, they're sort of, I remember it being about a pad, a pad in depth. So, um, <laughs> so at least one. Establish the tension through the feet yeah. and to generate the movement up to the zone. Yeah, I oh, mean, but he's, he's, yeah, he yeah, just dropped, dangling. Yeah, it just shows there, doesn't yeah. it? Is with okay. his methodology, yeah. he, he holds it, drops it off. Yeah, we're getting a better picture here. Yeah. Okay, so that's okay. He's doing well there. Nice. 
Squeeze that heel in. Okay, and the, the right foot hold that he kicked out to um, is kind of half and half. Half has texture and half of it is really smooth. Mm. Uh, as well, looking at the holds uh, direct, where the left side is a no-go. <laughs> yeah, we've seen some athletes, you know, forced to try and use smooth parts of dual texture holds, um, especially for the feet. And it obviously, yeah, it works for some and doesn't work for others. So it depends on a lot of factors, really, like the, the angle of the wall and the angle of the hold and how much pressure you're trying to put through the hold. We are in the beautiful location on a wharf jutting out into the harbour in Geneva. And the sun is peeking through. There's a bit of a breeze. It's not particularly warm, 22 degrees. 50% humidity, so sort of dryish conditions, I'd say. Honestly, can't believe how dry it is for a for a seaside location. Classic arm shakes of the climbers there. Yeah, he's really were, using his body to you know illustrate the sequence before he pulls on, isn't he? They were almost the in sync. Almost in sync with their arms swinging there. <laughs> okay. Ah, okay, I mean, he floated through that move. Oh, excellent. I fancy his chances at that. He's got a couple of minutes left. Yeah, it looked like he got the timing on those moves really, really down. Can see, see if we can get a shot of this. Of this. Ah, okay, you can see there on the right-hand side of the hold, yeah, that it's slightly blocked, so wow. really... Ooh. A lot of stress on the fingers there. Yeah, really in a room first, kind of two fingers almost. Yeah. But he's... Seems to have his left hand taped as well. Okay. Across the palm of the hand, unusual. Maybe a bit of a... Skin damage from a larger hold in could could be skin. Oh well, maybe a bit of a lumbar kill problem. Yeah. I have a great reference for finger injuries out there. The climbing physio on Instagram. Puffy. I fancy Aiden's chances on this go. Forty-five seconds left. Look at that. Yeah. Yeah, ah, that looked that looked good. That looked really close. I mean, honestly, the route set has been a bit cruel with the rotation of that volume uh, that they have to land with the right foot. I mean, there's... Yeah, it's, it's there's, a big rotation, isn't it? Yeah. There's the a left lot of, hip drops a lot. Yeah. So, Simone trains out of Crazy Center in Prato, which is near Florence, France. And... He has the luxury of having a gym that is very much orchestrated or arranged towards competition climbing. So Crazy Centre is a bouldering centre full of competition style boulders. So if, as an athlete, if you're based in Prato and you had the luxury of, of training at that gym, because um, most gyms try to strike a balance between commercial climbing and competition climbing. and. Now, he, James has found, oh, Reese, sorry, has found a toe hook there for the start move. So he's done yeah. that in quite a stable way. Yeah, I think he wouldn't have been able to, been able to reach off the heel as a slightly smaller athlete. Okay. I mean, from, from a distance, he's got a bit of a bit of a Dave Barron's look, hasn't he? Yeah, he does look like a young Dave Barron's, yeah. Dave Barron's was a competitor for Team GB. Excuse us, but being two Brits, we have more insight into Team GB than, than we do some of the other nations. Although Martin has actually competed alongside some, some international athletes that are here today, so we can give some more insight into that. So we're just seeing Etienne get really high on that third boulder for men. The Morpho Violet Volumes and these black crimps from UNIT in the Netherlands. He's able to give his leg very straight on that toe hook, isn't it? So, to create the tension. Nice. Oh, that was very close. Yeah, that was close. Uh, 
Yeah, Simone is struggling on the start of Boulder 1. I fancy his chances in this competition. He has a minute left. Okay, the French competitors pulling back on. Those two start holds are, are they're pretty good, you know, flat, flat. Yeah, if you crimps. catch them, if you catch them at the same time in compression, yeah. I mean, the, the start holds are pretty good. Ah, the yeah, yeah the two start holds. Yeah, they're, no, they're good like, texture. Yeah, the, there's some, you know, these crimps you're using that they're they're small but they're positive. Yeah, still very, but it's a steep angle. Yeah, but he's, he's doing well here. I think yeah, this come on, Etienne. Move. This is tough. Yeah, watch the resetters putting this one up, actually. Men's three. And that top hold from Morpho is, is yeah, really at full stretch. I think you have to do something. So is the texture's good. The okay. texture's really good. Yeah, they're, they're new volumes. Um, they have a they have an excellent texture. Um, it, it, it looks like a poor hole. Like, from the ground, it looks very slopey. We'll see. The top hold. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. I think matching could be quite yeah, tough. Yeah, I agree. You're not. You're left with feet that are, you know, very far to the right. Yeah, I suppose you maybe a heel on the uh, the purple hole next to the zone. Sure. We'll see though. There's lots of competitors to to go. Yeah. And here's one of them from Australia. Yeah. Randomly. Ah, interesting message from James there. Mm. Yeah. Yeah, so he went in tow hook. Well, yeah, our audience can see. He, went, he got a tow hook on the uh, on the hold he's on now and brought well, his hand up. That was excellent. Yeah, this is the same method as the previous British athlete, no? No, 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 no. Well, he's, no yeah, he the has, first. He has made it from the zone to that far right volume with relative ease. <laughs> okay. One hand on the last hold. Oh, nice. <laughs> Yeah, oh, that's really good. Okay. To yeah. make the match, you know, place both hands on the top hold. Okay, so the, yeah, the replay didn't show the, um, how he made the move from the zone hold to the next hold, but I'm going to see that again because there's plenty of time left, so yeah, should probably have a, give himself a good rest here. Um, now we've got Aiden fighting on men's three, but he's just dropped. Lucas from the Czech Republic on Boulder 1. Oh, nice. He's matched that fairly okay, easily. He's, yeah, he's looking good. Oh, confident. Yes. Really confident finish there. Okay. Nice one, Lucas. Yeah. So that's our first top. First top of the men's semi-final. Now back with James on men's two. Lucas from the Czech Republic, only, only 16. Impressive top. Let's see if he's James has decided on the way to close this boulder. Silas put a, did he have his chalk bag on his last? He's attempt? carrying a chalk bag with him. Did he have that on his last attempt? Obviously feels like that. Maybe that last hold does not have much chalk, and which will affect the friction. He's already had a feel of it on his previous go. So um, ah, he's tried that drop down method. Mm. I don't know if those volumes are deep enough for a jam. I didn't. I didn't see any jamming in the in the testing of the boulders. No, I, okay. I think it's unless you had unusually large hands. We have Quito Martini from France stepping out onto the mats to attempt boulder number one from the first athlete from France. Yeah, Quito Martins from uh, Martini from from France, uh, only 17. He's actually the current uh, French champion. Ah, nice. Yeah. Is that, I wonder if that's French Championships based on one one competition or is it a circuit? I'm not, yeah, I'm not sure on that. But he had to beat um, you know, some tough competition. Uh, I think the second place at that comp uh, the competition I saw was um, Michael Mowen. Okay. And in third, third was uh, Meiji. So 
really strong field oh, at, wow. uh, at uh, Quito managed to beat there. And I read Akita looking good on ball. Oh, yeah, just foot, as foot slip. Yeah, foot slip. Just as well. I mean, that didn't seem anything other than chance, did it really? Become stable in that position again and move on to the top of the boulder. Let's see. Okay, so over to men's fort. We've got Etienne. He's not managed the top on the first three boulders. Be great to see him close his comp with a with the top oh, he's managed to control himself using the the wall there just the uh, the change in angle of the wall just palming it to control his weight and he's had a good dynamic go at that move but yeah just fell short we've got Simone on men's two. Oh, the oh the Italian athlete crosses through so from the zone on men's two he crossed through just powered through left right to land the far right black volume and now we're back with Reese on men's three and he's just short on that okay we're back with Keto on boulder one Looking good for Quito. Oh, wow, Simone just having a second oh. go on that move. Wow. A couple of dramatic drops there. Men's four on the extreme left. Right, Etienne managing to make it to the zone again. Let's see if he can get his body a bit higher into this one. Oh, he's managed to get, gain the opposing hold. And maintain his weight and now into a toe hook. Wow, this is an incredibly physical position that um, with no footholds below those volumes to support your weight, so purely shoulders, strength. Here's just a quick replay of Keto's attempt at the top. It's been a really well set boulders, I feel, in the women's semi final and this round so far. There's been a lot of um, Dropped from the last move of the boulders. Yeah, you're effectively climbing 95% of the boulder every time. You, yeah. You make an attempt yeah. and not really been rewarded as such. Yeah. I'm definitely more familiar with this scoring system though with a single zone in the top. So we momentarily had four athletes on the wall, now we're just down to two. Got the British athlete on the right on men's three. He's now trying some quite extreme knowledge relying on that left toe. He's managed to make it work up to that point, but then, yeah, incredibly hard to generate the force to get up to that, that penultimate violet morpho volume. Yeah, that top section is uh, looks very difficult. So the uh, Etienne tr um, had his right hand on the final crimp on boulder three, didn't he? And yeah. Sorry, no. Um, did he have his right hand on the zone and tried to go all the way up to the penultimate hold? I think he did. That's what he did manage in the end. I think he was probably a taller athlete. Yeah. Mm. I think the root setters envisaged that you would go up to the next crimp with your left hand. Okay. But, uh, anyway, let's focus on uh, the Czech athlete. Yeah, he looked good going to that final hold on the first boulder. Yeah, it was a co confident, confident finish to that boulder. Ah, now we've got an attempt with some different beta, okay. and I quite like this. This, yeah. looks, this like looks, that's looks more promising, doesn't it? Yeah. Oh, still not enough though. Yeah. Yeah. The. the the first slope of James, the first purple hold on that boulder. Yes. Uh, they're putting their left heel on that. How? I didn't get a good look at that hold. How deep is that hold? I can see. Okay, we got a picture. Yeah, I Seems have. like you would 
need to create a lot of tension on that hole with your heel. Yeah, you've got a bit of a scoop, sort of low and left. Um, so perhaps we'll catch a glimpse of it in the live stream in due course. But there is a there is a bit of a scoop there. I'd be I'd be more confident on that heel than some of the heels we saw in the women's semi-finals. There's one in particular I'm thinking of that was poor on that yellow boulder. Yes. The athletes trying to place their right heel high and it just not being enough shape to the hold for them to, to really use it in a good way. You know, yeah, look, his heel staying. Yeah. You know, he's Pulling. managing to power up. Pulling hard Excellent. on the of drink. Here we go. <laughs> Incredible. Yes. Incredible Excellent. top to that. Brilliant, James, really the first top of Boulder 3. Yeah, and those early attempts didn't look that good, you know. He's, he's really um, worked that out on the fly, let's say. You know, within the four-minute time, changes beater. Oh, that's fantastic. Yeah, only, excellent. He only had about 10 seconds to go. And he, nice. Brilliant. Yeah, and actually, the match wasn't that bad, was it? Should be fairly heated, the competition, I suppose. Um, so we've got Simone back out. Young man from Prato, or at least training out of Prato on men's three. And then we have, I believe that's, is that Etienne? Oh well, no, Quito. Quito from France on men's two. And then we can welcome Dragos from Romania. Our Romania athlete. Simona going really well. Managing to match the zone hold there. And, okay. wow, really confident here. Uh, can you make it? Oh. Fantastic. Fantastic climbing for Simona. I mean, he powered his way through that. Um, excellent. Yeah, and just his second attempt. That was a great ah, time. And now Quito's caught the uh, right volume, right hand black volume on men's two. Oh, he's he made that look. Honestly, wow. Making use of that low left foothold. So very poor, you know, textured dimple, zone hold, and. For whatever reason, that was a better body position for him. Maybe his left leg was completely outstended and extended out underneath yeah. him. And so, yeah, he could just, he made that finish to that boulder look a lot easier than we've seen other competitors. Yeah, so we've only seen the British Ashley athlete up that, that position. Um, but yeah, that le lower left foot on the on the zone hole looked yeah. much better positioned, didn't it? Worked brilliantly. Yeah, I mean, he did that top, top section with relative ease. Yeah. Dragos on men's one. One minute remaining. And Reese has managed to explode up into that position in the groove above the black volume on men's four. Having to stay really close to the wall there and to avoid coming off. Wow, really applying some force there to stay on. Yeah, you can see his body shaking just to just to stay in that position. Yeah. And then he uh, adapted the angle of his foot, left foot really well, like managed to turn on the toe without his foot coming off. He got his ankle well aligned to, to make the jump out right, but yeah, just couldn't couldn't get the distance. He's going to try and make time for one more go, but no, unfortunately not. Just a replay of Simone's top, doing really well to get that toe hook back in to make the finish. I yes, know. yeah, I, th I thought for a moment he might have blown it. He kind of, his foot came off and then he was, his feet like, yeah. started shaking a little bit. And I thought, he, yeah. I thought he'd blown it for a moment, but he did really well to recover. Re-establishing yourself on something that you were just on and you, you only feel like you've moved a few centimetres higher and that hold should be within reach, but sometimes it can just be too much. So yeah, 
take my hat off to him there, managing to get that toe back in. Now we have a member of the Austrian team out on the mats. Julia Ausberg. On problem two. And on problem one we have Andreas, also from Austria. Good crowd here today. You know, I thought there was a chance. Well, I mean, it's, it's done a very good job of attracting people who are climbers and non-climbers to the event due to the location. Really central location. Yeah, it's a fantastic venue. Certainly beats the Birmingham NEC. <laughs> <laughs> it's been a while since I watched a climbing comp there. Uh, Malcolm in Boulder and Steve McClure in lead. Malcolm did quite a number of the comps in Italy. Ah. So, yeah, he was a big name out here. Very, yeah, he's a bit of a reference for Italian climbing, isn't he? Like for, in yeah. the competition circuit, yeah, for sure. Yeah. Reference for strength. Yeah, so me many of the World Cup rounds in that period were, were in Italy. Uh, there was Lecco, uh, Rovereto, uh, Badenecchia, Fiera di Permero. Yeah. There's a real appetite for them in Italy about them. So it's good to see more international competitions back on Italian soil. Absolutely, yeah. Bressanone is has hosted two World Cups and they have been incredibly impressive competitions. Yeah, there's a real pedigree as well in, in Italian climbing. Uh, in fact, the first overall World Cup winner in the men's category was Christian Corre back in 1999. Okay. And the first world champion in 2001 was Mr. E9 himself, Mardo Calibani. Bit of history there for anyone younger listening. And the images, you know, the style of the climbing is very, obviously very different. The structures are very different. But, yeah, maybe, I don't know, in a way, I feel like some of that sort of climbing translated to rock quite well. And athletes who were just rock climbers could, powerful rock climbers could, you know, translate to that competition style. But... It, it has changed a lot. It has, yeah. Just a bit, just different style now, but absolutely. I must say, I, I feel this comp. There is, a, there's a really good mix. Yeah. You know, sometimes you look at a, a modern climbing competition and you barely see a crimp in sight, and there's a really good mix on here. Of, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Of everything. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, I'm really enjoying the setting. Yeah, me too. So we've got Yao from Portugal, head route setter. Well, the chief of this competition, head route setter in the climbing district in France. Which is only about two hours from here, so it's quite a local competition for him. And then we have Davide Bassotto. And if you check out his Instagram, he has climbed some fantastic stuff on rock. But he also makes time to set some incredible boulders as well in the Torino and the Milano areas. Okay, who do we have on... Boulder number one, we have our first German athlete in the semi-final, Emil Zimmermann. Now, judging by the, the sort of powerful nature of the climbing in Boulder number three, I fancy Simone's chances on men's four, if he can get through the start. But right now, we are checking out Romania, Romanian athlete on men's two. So Kito's managed to match the zone, power through to the top volumes, uh, and he's made that top look easy as well. Bravo. First athlete to have two tops. Gets him to the top of the leaderboard for the time being. Nice, so we have Kito Martini in first, James Jenkins in second, and Lucas Mortoloski in third. But a lot can change, don't we just know it? 
this German athlete coming out and finishing that boulder with some style. One minute and counting. Simone's just found his way onto this black volume with one foot. Trying to get his body up into that corner. Well, if you're feeling a bit insecure in that position, but the, the other athletes have managed to sort of stand in the corner and compose themselves before trying to work their way around onto the front of the um, the front of the wall, the more overhanging section. Yeah, does another attempt to duck from him? I presume it does. No. No? No, no, he, he, he'd already secured the zone, so... Yeah, okay. Yeah, the only thing that's deducting is the skin on his fingertips. Yeah, sure, sure. And you've only got so much skin to, to spare. So some tactics do come into it. Attempts, whether they're worth taking them, if you feel close to a boulder or not. Yeah, I think it's um, worth mentioning when we're chatting to the head root setter. Um, we, when you, especially on the crimp holes, when you go to grab the crimp, and obviously anyone knows, as your fingers come down on the hold, you kind of, you do, yeah. your, your fingers, <laughs> every yeah. time it's on those tips, as yeah. it, it, it rolls down the, yeah. the wall into the crimp position. Yeah. I, right. um, I have a training board at home in a dark grey sort of paint, paint colour. And honestly, with fresh, freshly chalked fingertips, you can see where your fingers strike the wall maybe two centimeters above the hold so you're striking the wall you know you feel you've hit the hold directly yes. you've actually struck the wall above it and your fingertips have dragged down the surface of the wall and onto the hold yeah um, and it's illustrated really well by that yeah unless you're coming at the hold you know in control very slowly mm. and even then there's going to be a bit of as you get your yeah, yeah. you know your fingernails really rat up on the crimp yeah it's uh, absolutely it's not going to do great things to, you, to yeah. your fingertips Right, back on men's three. All the focus on this Austrian athlete, Ilya. Looking strong on that move. Ah, managed to intuitively switch that heel to a toe without really looking like he focused on it. Clamp the feet, brilliant. Yeah, that was confident climbing. So we're left with three athletes on the mats. We're just, yeah, get, we're just going to get a brief replay of the uh, of Ilya climbing this boulder. That's a great angle. You can see that that morpho volume and how positive the heel is when he slipped from the heel to the toe. But it doesn't matter to him. He's topped the boulder. That's awesome. So now we've got 30 seconds left. You can see the clock at the top of your, top left of your screen. Oh. This place is really coming alive with the progress from this Austrian athlete. Fantastic. And stuck in with these climb lab brushes, giving giving everything a good clean before. Sensible approach. Obviously, we've had quite a few athletes go through these boulders now, so anyone stepping out onto the mats wants to give these boulders a good brush to remove any excess chalk, give themselves a better chance of making good progress on their first attempt. Now we have this Romanian athlete on men's three. Uh, now he's trying that cross through method. I'm not a fan of that. I just don't think that can work. I, you, that volume is so poor in that direction. It seems like it's only there to oppose the, f the finish of the boulder. You know, trying oh. to pull down on that is, is poor. Emil, making this uh, boulder number two look very easy so far. Another climber taking his draw back. These, these guys did assess the boulders at the start together, did they not? Yes. So there's that observation period That's right. of six minutes or so. Yeah, eight, eight minutes for the for the four boulders. Okay. Okay, yeah, he spotted the undercut like Tito did. Tito. Nice. Yeah, casual. Yeah, wow. He was all over that boulder. Yeah. Yeah, so I wonder if that's been a conversation between them. Like, take a chalk bag on this one. The top hold's particularly poor. It's not been chalked by the root setters. Yeah, you know. it's a great start for Emil. I mean, that was a flash on, on boulder two there. And he dispatched the, the first boulder, second attempt. I mean, we could be seeing 
some of the mainstays of the, the national teams in years to come here. You know, we've got quite a young field in this competition, but you can imagine with the way in which they're climbing already, that these young men and women could be mainstays on the World Cup circuit. Just under a minute and a half left. Is it enough for one of these guys to top? Still seen most competitors struggle with uh, just the establishing on Boulder One. Yeah, really tough start. Yeah, wow, wow. <laughs> French athletes <laughs> made it work, and he's come across in a very stable manner. This is looking you know, great. He that's, looks solid. That's a positive cream. Yeah. Wow, that was Fantastic. awesome. I, wow, yeah, I wonder if the, uh, the root setters looked at that. Oh. We just went direct. Yeah, that was... <laughs> that was incredible. Yeah, hopefully we can see a replay of that. Here we go. <laughs> Brilliant. Incredible. So, not wasting any time getting into the black volume, just dynoing straight out into the wall and then putting in a knee bar yeah. for some stability in the middle of that move getting established on the crimp easily yeah and then cutting the knee bar and finishing the boulder yeah that's just re really good um sort of climbing brain there to you know he'd already had a couple of few goes hadn't he um, absolutely he'd had a yeah i don't know maybe four goes on the so slab method okay yeah so he topped it on his sixth attempt wow incredible, so that's yeah. really good yeah um sort of climbing brain to be able to step away He's looked at an alternative method. You know, I think in the moment to do that um, no. shows real maturity. Yeah. That was fantastic. The start hole is, is, a, yeah. is a huge jug. Yeah, but you are and, risking uh, your shins, I mean, that aren't is, you there? That's a long way. I mean, just yeah, looking yeah. at the, the Austrian athlete on it now, it's like, my God, that is a long way. Yeah. And we have Tuka Simonen from Finland on men's two, just assessing the boulder. And out on his first boulder, uh, German climber Tim, Tim Werthner. So you can see the results on our screens, but I'm not seeing a result for the fourth boulder there. Okay, so on the far left of your screens, we're just zooming in to look at men's four. When you stood on the, the black volume, making it round that corner, it looks like it should be straightforward, but it, it, it really isn't. Mm. You can see him straining to see, trying to work out what yeah. height he's at. Killer on your shoulders. You know, Absolutely, you're... shoulders, centre yeah. of the back. Yeah. A move for move for young people, I would say. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll stick to the commentary booth. <laughs> All right, just spinning off there. I think for years. Yeah. My mind, I always think of the Austrian team and the French team just yeah. having great depth. Yeah. yeah I see uh, Killian and Anna as being the, the sort of flag bearers for the team, you know. Yeah. I remember watching them. We've seen another top there on men's three. Yeah. Emil from Germany having a blind of a, of a round. That's his third top and second flash. He's on fire. Yeah, 
Yeah, looking forward to seeing him on men's four. But right now we're back on men's one. Julian looking for a top. Yeah. Plenty of time left on the clock there. So these athletes are coming out in reverse order. The better athletes may be coming out later, but that's not always, that's not necessarily the case. No. Depending on how the qualification went, we saw that in the women's semi-final. Absolutely. Uh, with uh, Anna Bollius from Austria. Yeah. Yeah, that's a yeah. They're all all very good athletes. Yeah, with the variety of the boulders and the variety of the strength and weaknesses in the athletes, you know, anything could happen really. Yeah, I feel with lead climbing, there's perhaps a bit more consistency with results. I think it's I think it's very hard to be consistent um, in a boulder competition, boulder competitions. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, strap yourselves in. We've got another Italian athlete entering the building. Perhaps you can even hear in the background the warm reception from Simone Arena. Most probably a lot of friends and family in the building for this young man. Getting to see him compete on home turf. We've got the German athlete in the centre of the wall on men's two. Really climbing through those moves rather than dinoing through them, you know. Made his way out to the previous black volume, you know, through ten getting through tension through the feet. Um, and that didn't work for the British athlete. Okay. Uh, when we saw um, Keto. Uh, He's a bit too stretched out. Or? And Emil both used uh, the left foot on the zone hold. Ah, that's true. And that seemed to put them in a much more comfortable position. I feel like, yeah, it wants to be there. The black hole is a little bit too high. So back with Dav Davide. On men's one. He's got the zone. He's just going to try and transfer his weight over left now. And sort of using that crimp. Oh, horrible position his right yeah. hand is in. Yeah. Sort of like an undercut shoulder Gaston combination. You know, so yeah. elbow oh. vertically upwards and uh, pulling vertically upwards through the hold. I don't, I don't think my arm goes in that position. No, I mean, you need a, you need a lot of shoulder flexibility to get into that position and use yeah. it in an effective way. Because it is quite a hard sport on your body. No, very much so. And we can see that just in the age of the competitors. You know, where years gone by, you, know, you could compete at this level wow. to, I don't know, maybe early 30s, something like that. Yeah. Whereas now, it seems to be all teenagers or, you know, early, yeah. early 20s. Yeah. I think in the, in the uh, female category uh, semi final earlier, the oldest competitor was 24. Wow. Which is David are just yeah, struggling there. Um, I feel like he might need to adjust his hand on that zone hold uh, in a way that will allow him to, to move up and left in a, in a better way. But, I mean, he's, he's getting to attempt this start multiple times. Like, he's, he's managed to get that dialed in. So, let's just see if he adjusts something on this attempt. He's only got just under 30 seconds left. Okay, so he's gone for the lower foot this time. No, no opt-in for the higher foot. 
I'm focusing on the local boy, but we're back yeah. actually on men's two. Okay. Yeah, yeah, so the other two competitors at the top of this boulder, they both moved their left hand to the high of the two blue holes, didn't they? As an undercut. Yes, yeah, as yeah, an undercut. So David here on men's one is just going to be out of time. And now we have uh, the second male Italian athlete entering the building. And he's got a, quite a good spectrum of competitions under his belt. Yeah, just 20 years of old age. Niccolo competed in both the European events uh, this year. Uh, back in Austria, came finished eighth at the European Championships. He was 33rd. And Michael O'Neill here, on. looking good. Michael looking quite casual on this boulder. Can you work it out though? Yeah, he's tried the match on that penultimate volume. And although the texture's good on those, yeah, that, that one's particularly slopey and is in the steeper part of the wall. So that was interesting. His body language was suggesting he was very comfortable, yeah. wasn't he? He yeah, yeah. looked very composed. There was no shaking and no he was kind of looking around, didn't look hurried. Niccolo keeping with the trend of, unfortunately, of struggling with the start on this Builder 1. We're back on men's four. So the last boulder. Yeah, for Emil. On the right hand side of the screen, Nicolas made it. And he is making that match on that undercut hold, which allows him to move up and left in a quite wow. a controlled manner there. Wow, if you look at Emil, left his screen, that was fantastic. He made the move around the corner static, and yeah, we're in for a top. Wow, Emil's powered his way through that. Four boulders, four tops. Incredible amount of pressure on that athlete there with the uh, with the MC. Yeah, inclined well up until that point, but it's you know quite obviously quite a hard position to explode out of. And then we're just seeing a replay of a German athlete finishes competition with four tops. Wonder if the I presume the route setters will be watching this and sort of judging the the difficulty of these boulders and ju judging how well the athletes do on it. So as they do progress to the finals. might make some adjustments. Antoine Girard from France, stepping out for men's one. And just pulling on. Davide Colombo's back out on men's two, just to the left of your screen. And Antoine is getting him established, himself established on the first boulder. Some good action on men's three here. This looks looks strong. Ah, finishing with the toe hook to control it. Nice. Well, the German team having some good success in this men's semi-final. Davide Colombo spanning from the zone to this black volume that's blocked by the two blue pill holds. 
Yeah, really stable through that middle section, bridging out between the two sort of camouflage volumes. And putting in an early heel. Yeah, this is very different, yeah. sort of riding his body rightwards, uh, and he needs to move left. Yeah, that's, that heel is sort of false economy, really, because it's a nice position to cut on the wall, you know, probably taking a bit of load through that heel, but you need to move left, and obviously you need something underneath him. I'm just going to check on Davide's climbing history, because I'm pretty sure that he travelled out to Salt Lake for one of the Boulder World Cups back in April in Austria. And then he climbed in Villars in the European Championships in September. And his last competition was World Cup in Copper in September. I mean, it's a really spanned method, this. I mean, between the better holds on the wall, you know, not relying on the zone too much. But you need a certain wingspan to achieve that. See if he uses that heel again or... No, he's going for the heel. Let's see if he tries to do anything different. Nope. Oh, he's managing. I'm impressed with that. I would think you would need something on the left-hand side to, to sort of... Yeah. yeah, you're absolutely right, James. Yeah. Yeah, oh, that's a shame. Leo Avezu will step out on men's one for his first boulder of the afternoon. with both of those two climbers now on the right hand side of your screen Leo making quick progress on boulder one yeah Leo looking really quite comfortable on this he's going to get the opportunity to eye up the last hold on his first go oh wow it, oh. I'm not sure he's read that hold right you know, there is a scoop there that he's gone for, and obviously, yeah, you, if you can apply enough force to that and enough control, you could hold it, I'm sure, but I feel like the clamping method with the hands, more positive part of the hold to finish the boulder, and yeah, unfortunately, he's just not read that, but but I mean, he's so comfortable on the start of that boulder, he's still got two and a half minutes left, I fancy his chances. But let's take a look at men's four briefly there. Nicola managing to get up to the penultimate volume and he has used the left toe he's dropped down to use that volume to control himself and put the heel in that was brilliant you know incredible volume in the stadium now for Nicola Salvatore yeah he read that beautifully and now we're back with Julian we're on men's three. Oh, he looks looks like he's got this last move in the tank. Oh, and even managed to get a right a high right toe on the zone. And then wow, playing with his feet, you know, really using them to control himself for the for the finish of the boulder as well. Yeah. Very intuitive climbing from that young man. Bravo. So we're left with climbers on the extreme left and the extreme right of the wall. We're back on men's one with Leo. Let's see if he changes his methodology for the finish of the boulder. Again, looking fairly comfortable here. Oh no, that's uh, that's really unfortunate. I have to say, like he did take it more to the right. Yeah, he kind of did the opposite of what he did on his the yeah. first job at the top, where he had his right hand in the dish. Yeah. That time he had his left hand in the dish. Yeah. But he's, he needs to go for the double clam, doesn't he? Yeah. Not completely empty-handed. He's going to take his own. But then this replay of 
Niccolo. Yeah, impressive climbing from him. So now here we are, and ladies and gentlemen. Another Italian climber about to enter the arena. Still, he's a young man, obviously very confident in himself. Yeah, I mean, it's you need confidence in these competitions, don't you? you need confidence on the wall, 100%. Now with Antoine on the right, David on the left. David climbing really well through this section. Well, I've seen some quick work on these on these two boulders. A little bit uncertain of his feet here. Okay, Antoine but, goes yeah. Ooh. And again. Wow. Yeah, okay, stable. Good. A yeah. little bit tentative that. Now Pietro on men's one. He's up into the middle section of the boulder, moving across to the to the vertical crimp. Let's see how he chooses to take this top hold. Oh, he's read that, you know, as it's written. Put up 8C in Valdo on it. Recently, Adam Andra's come out to to try his. Oh, really? Test pieces in that area, yeah. yeah. Okay, so Pietro's based in Arco as well. He is, yeah. Trains at the, well, he will be training at the, the National Centre there. And previously been training in Milan. As a climb, that's a bit of a, a dream venue to be. Absolutely. Arco. Yeah, to yeah. be located. Yeah, absolutely. Great, great home. Antoine just taking a moment to chalk up here before he moves up. Yeah, I mean, that's a okay. that's a hot topic for me, <laughs> carrying a chalk bag on this boulder in particular. <laughs> I don't know what's gone on. Somebody said this hold is slippy. Nice. Oh, no, yeah, okay. So we're finding athletes who use that upper left foot, you know, to be in a bit of a... Yeah, it's a hard one to read. He, yeah, he's obviously not feeling something right there because he did put... Um, just prior to him using that hold, he did put his left foot on the zone hold, okay. and then he bumped it up. Okay. So he's obviously feeling something isn't right there. But the the to finish with a flying right heel onto the you know to create the compression for that to, that's ambitious. Yeah. Yeah. But no, it's not going to work. He's walking off. He's going to have a last go on men's four here for the German athlete. Flicks into the groove easily. He's going to launch himself across the wall. Just a replay of the top here from Davide Colombo. Oh, nice. Powerful climber. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> those, those arms suggest powerful climber. <laughs> yeah. Trying to make a bit of headway on this, this first boulder as the other athletes prepare to pull on. Got Niccolo back on the wall on men's three. And he's a powerful climber. And he's make honestly, he's going to make this work. Wow, would you look at that? That was really cool. Fantastic. Oh. Wow. Flash. Yeah. That was a nice piece of climbing. Yeah, I, I, that's probably the method the root setters intended. I, yeah. have, have we seen another athlete use the, the small screw all that right? Nope. We've not yeah. seen anyone use that for the right foot. I, yeah. I, I personally haven't. And then he just drop, put the Egyptian in, like the drop knee. Yeah. On, I mean, that right hand volume that he used for the drop knee is, is fading away. So it's... Um, um, on, yeah. a, on a volume that's not presenting itself in a positive manner to your foot. Yeah. And, and it made the, it work. Yeah, and that, the screw hold out to the right, it, it's very positive. Yeah. It's, it's a good foothold. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, it made it work really well. So back on men's four, Julian Vimmer. Two tops under his belt, looking for number three.
and he's really trying to use that thumb and forefinger to sort of force his weight into the corner whilst he adjusts his feet. So just a bit of a bit of a pause for all the athletes just assessing what they're going to try next. Julian making his way round. Really just not getting enough height with his body to suggest that you might hold that, that move. It's good to see that the, the weather has held as well. There was forecast a bit of a bit of rain today, but it seems to have held off well. Yep. Patchy cloud. 56% humidity. 22 degrees. Nice. Great climbing, Connie's. Light breeze. <laughs> sure, like all climbers, you, you're a little bit obsessed with the weather, aren't you? Absolutely. Especially if you're a Brit. Good weather days. And not to be... Not to be missed. So Slav, looking pretty good in this position, but he's, he's just... It's going to run out of time, yeah, isn't it? Absolutely. Oh. Um, oh, no. Yeah. I'm just going to catch a glimpse of Nicolo's top there. So just stepping out onto the mats on men's one, we have Giulielmo Frangiliano. No, nope, I'm butchering that pronunciation, excuse me. Frangiliano. Eighteen years of age, 169 centimetres tall. He's got some good stats here. Last competition was the IFSC Youth European Championships back in September. Back in September, like it was a long time ago. <laughs> And he's managed to match feet on that volume really well. Hmm. I thought he was getting a little bit of a respite after the tricky start before he was set up for the top, but no, he was denied there by... I mean, four tops from Emil. He looks super strong. Then we've got Keto from France and Julian Vimmer from Austria. Two Italian athletes on the mat at present. Davide Colombo and Pietro Vidi, both just checking out the boulders. We just turn our attention to the Spanish athlete on men's one. Excellent. Mm, this Something not working for him there. <laughs> Meanwhile, Antoine tops men's three. And now we're back to Pietro on men's two. And this is an area of the boulder I would think he would dance through. He's gone for the zone with his left foot. And he's riding that right heel like his uh, teammate Davide did. Let's see if he makes any adjustments. Trying to power out left whilst leaving that heel in. Hmm. Yeah, no adjustments in that position. He's got 45 seconds left. Is he going to give it another go? Is it? I think it'd be, be tough to make the top. Yeah, it will, yeah, won't it? He's yeah. really going to have to race through this start. Yeah, he's going mean, to pull on, but 30 seconds. So I don't think I'll be... No, 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 he's calling it. That's unfortunate. Yeah. yeah. I feel like 
just a small adjustment to the beater. And he might have had a top there, but... We're just going to watch French athlete close this boulder in a replay. Nice, very stable. Thorben. Thorben Bloom. In the centre of your screens. We've got the Bulgarian athlete. Well, the stadium's really filled up to get behind these athletes. Thorben in that, for want of a better way to describe it. Slav just struggling with that start. French athlete Leo looking good on men's three and then we revert our attention to Nicolo. Nicolo looking quite good on that really like creeping around the corner with some control you know yeah not seen that from many people yeah and that was a good camera angle we could really see the yeah the transition that the climbers have to make from one side of the wall to the other again ah, just not finding, finding the balancing point in that groove yeah, Quito earlier on still the only athlete we saw to attempt the, the direct method yeah that was great vision yeah I don't see anyone else reading that I no. really don't you know no, it was um, yeah it just shows how how good it was to read well how good it was how uh, yeah impressive it was to read that sequence Come on, Nicolo. Excellent. Maybe we get get a chance at this moves around the corner as we zoom out and look at all of the athletes on the wall right now. Yeah, the French athlete topping out on, on Boulder 3 there. Oh, wow. Unfortunately rejected by a foot slip there on the upper blue volume. Yeah, that was interesting watch, watching Thorbe on that boulder then. Um, perhaps one of the one of the taller athletes. He, he looked a little bit more uncomfortable than I've seen previous competitors there. Yeah. But, uh, Slav finally making some progress on that boulder, but just out of time, really. He said he was very surprised to qualify in first place, but he does like a crimp. And he feels like the qualification phase favoured him so he's obviously managed to capitalise on that and hence he's coming out last now and we have Pietro Vidi on men's three managing to make that first dynamic move and place the heel it's quite a tricky dead point to that hole isn't it after those two slopers yeah it's blocked as well so yeah. you have to be v very accurate there yeah I watched the uh, guys put that on the wall and they made a conscious decision to block that because of that. Okay. So, so yeah. if you could, I watched Gabriele Moroni hold the position footless and campus into the into the zone hold with his right hand. So I think they felt like that was just a little bit too straightforward and wanted to add an, you know, more of an element of difficulty or chance, let's say, by blocking the hold. So yeah, that's worked well. Yeah, you see that's 
just off the screen. Pietro has had another attempt in that style. But back with that one on men's four. He has powered his way into that position. And he looks good on this toe hook. Again, we, we saw earlier athletes struggle. Okay. Yeah, and he, he's worked it out, hasn't he? No, no use of the knee bar, but he still managed to change his feet. Yeah, once you get your right hand onto the penultimate crimp, yeah. it's quite and cut is that hole. And I think yeah. you're pretty much home and dry once you get that hole. Yeah. And back with Pietron, men's three. He's trying this method that I... Oh, fantastic. In the volume with his left foot, which gave him some more stability and allowed him to maintain the height whilst he moved his hands. With which to close them if they can. Luca is back on the wall. He's struggling with the start of this men's one boulder. But Pietro has managed to catch the zone again. See if he tries the same method. He has. He's tried to go up with the right. So even after the success of the previous attempt, unfortunately that change in method has cost him. That illustrates why they made that that handhold the zone, even though yeah. it's like the you know the third hold on the wall. Little tap of the temple here, um, as he closed that boulder, <laughs> as if you know ah now I understand. And we have Slav making progress on men's three. I mean straight into the zone, no problem. Crossing over the left. And going again. I mean, for strong. Yeah, looking very strong this boulder. Well, no problem. Ooh. Wow, full splits almost from Slab there. But decides to revert to the lower volumes to close it. Wow, that's a good flash. Yeah, a really good flash. Really impressive. But, you know, there's a big difference between doing a hard boulder outside completing one of these in four minutes. No, oh, absolutely. Yeah, I'm sure that plays a big factor. For some more than others, actually. Yes. Yeah. yeah. I think you know, some people are going to thrive under under yeah. the pressure and having a crowd watching. Yeah. Absolutely. Wow, we have some really dynamic climbing there on the right-hand side of the screen on men's two. And in contrast, some really tenuous climbing out of that and he tried it 12 or 13 attempts before wow. before making the move <laughs> and you know with seconds to go he crushed the top of the boulder after making that move on his 13th attempt or wow. something it was the, the tenacity was incredible some excellent climbing a really good set of boulders yeah absolute hats off to the root setters I think the I'm just looking at the men's score so far in the semi-final and, and the, it's got the great split. And just everybody dropping different boulders, finding different moves hard. So we've got Leo now creeping around. Wow, doing very well there. Almost too energetic out that corner, sort of, you know, jumping too far away from the wall. Ah, excellent from Thorben. Managed to make that move stick. He's got 23 seconds left. And he has a left foot, it's which gone. should serve him well. It's gone high. Ah, beautifully dropped drop down. Back. Yeah, yeah. dropped back down. That was great. Nice. Oh, well done. Yeah, really good top there. Red, red that's, I mean, that's a... Basically missed the hold as mm. they tried to drop down to use it. So it seems like an obvious thing to do, but it's not guaranteed that it's going to work. So we've just got some rankings on the stream. And we're looking at the top eight of these competitors progressing to the finals. So we've got Davide Colombo from Italy in a precarious position at present because we've got athletes on the map scoring points and he's in eighth position at present. So let's see, let's see what happens. It'd be great to see an Italian climber in the finals just 
due to the response from the crowd. But we've got the Spanish athlete here closing men's three with ease, which I think would affect the rankings. Yeah, we'll look at that shortly. We already have uh, Nicolo and Salvatore in fifth place. Yeah, that's, it. that's great news. He climbed well. On the powerful boulders, he looked great. Oh, well held there uh, from Luca. So Luca is taller. You know, it must be 185 or something. And yeah, let's see how he chooses to approach this. Uh, he's liking that heel. Interesting. It seems like an obvious way to rock up to that, but then yeah, it does leave you stranded a bit. Let's see. Yeah, it's going to be hard to move left here. No. Okay, yeah. We've got Pietro, far left, pulling on men's four. Ah, and he's... Let's see. Nice. Pietro Vidi in the groove. Trying to keep his centre of gravity into the wall as he looks around the corner. Oh. Here he goes. Sufficient to stay established on the wall. And back with Luca. Taking the zone. Riding a left heel to come across. Put the heel on initially and then slid it to a toe really nicely. Yeah, but not yeah, he's really pressed for time now though. 21 seconds. He's going to have to... Oh, uh, I think that good attempt uh, sapped his energy. I yeah. think it really took a lot out of him. Oh, Pietro possibly with his best best attempt there. Good effort from both guys fighting till the end, but yeah, coming up short, unfortunately. Here he is. Yeah, last attempt there. Really fully committed. Just bunching up into the sort of sort of frogged position with double heels there. But just yeah, confident climbing from that athlete. Okay, Slav, ball to four, quickly up to that position. Yeah, that's Slav on four, yeah. Yeah, they had viewing time. Um, yeah, yeah almo almost a minute had passed before uh, the German competitors pulled on number three. Ah, this, is a, this is a very confident effort from the word go. You know, look at that, adjusting those that methodology on the fly. Whoa, lost, lost his foot there. Yeah, he has held well. He has got power to spare there. You know, he's, that boulder is so within his abilities yes. that he could sort of play with the beta that he was going to use. Back with Slav on men's four. That, that was an excellent go. Let's go, Slav, come on. Oh, just not finding that momentum into the wall. Nice. I don't recall. I remember the um, Emil kind of really stuck around that side quite slowly in control. Um, Obviously, Keto did the dyno method. Oh, now that oh, was ah, much he had, more. He had just he had just as question. you predicted, yeah, yeah, yeah. Wow, with the toe hook in. Ooh. Okay, no knee bar. Okay, here we go. Yeah, oh, that's deserved. Bravo, Slab. Nice work. Chimps from Mensa were coming away, but. Slav did a great job there. Maybe we're going to see it again now. I'm so surprised that hold that he has with his left hand now that they can that he can hold that vertically downwards with a double pinch mm. and still use the toe hook on the right, reacquaint themselves with the boulders that they've seen during that observation period. Martin? <laughs> <laughs> uh, well, you said earlier, uh, Luca enjoys the crimp. There's a mix. Of, there are some crimps on this boulder. Yeah. Um, oh, he's moved to that crimp. Okay, so he's gone for the 
Far right foot. Well, both athletes doing really well on both these boulders. We could have a, a top in unison here, almost. Oh, wow, Luca pulling straight through. No, but he, isn't, he does enjoy the crimp, doesn't he? Absolutely. Oh! Surrounded by water on three sides. Giulermo back on the wall. Oh, doesn't manage to make that stick. Luca just cleaned his shoes, ready to pull back on. He's been getting psyched up for this next attempt. Tapping the start hold with his finger just to get a legitimate start. And then he's out to the crimp. And now we switch to him as he powers up to the next crimp and straight into the two volumes. Managed to find the last volume and make the match in good style. Yeah, excellent. He'll be pleased with that. Yeah, was that second attempt for Luca? We're running out of time. Just over 30 seconds. It's enough. But this move must be draining. He's tried a different method there. One that might actually work. Catching that first hold and kicking out to the art line volume and, and stopping your momentum with the right foot. We've not seen anybody try that yet. After such a strong start. Yeah. yeah. Little replay of Luca on, on these Morpho volumes. Look at that. He just looks forward to getting the crimp, doesn't he? <laughs> Nice. Man after my own heart. Yeah. Presumably brightening up the camera shots that you can see. Thorben straight into that groove. Hips right in against the wall. Cheek right against the wall. Brilliant. Okay. Brilliant yeah. climbing. He's yeah. read that really well. Yeah, it's much slower, wasn't he? Around, coming around. Oh no, oh. okay. So, yeah. He tried to do it in situ and yeah, it just fell afoul of that. Yeah, but perhaps he's height helping a little bit there on that move. All of, it, all of the load going through his feet, effectively. Yeah, Thorben has already secured himself a final place just by getting that zone hold on, it, on his first attempt as pushing him up to fourth place. Nice. And he's managed to hit that catch. Let's see if he gets as close to the wall again. Yeah. That's yeah, interesting. Can, yeah. yeah. Mm. And you perhaps lose a little bit of concentration on the start. Yeah. No, I can imagine. Yeah, a little bit higher. Come on. Yeah, he's got it now. Hips in. Oh, I'm disappointed from there. So we've had a couple of athletes now. The uh, the Spanish athlete as well also made it through the start. Yeah. And again, must be thinking, okay, yeah. I've got this. I can I can get through that again. And then not making it through the start again. Yeah, it just shows how often yeah. on that section of the climb is, doesn't yeah. it? You know. And Luca only has one top. Yeah, he could really do with his boulder. In two zones. Yeah. No. Uh, if he tops this. And Luca didn't manage to get the zone on the first boulder. Giulermo from Spain sits in eighth position with one top and four zones. Yeah. Yeah, you're right. And if Luca steals the top here, then he'll make finals. Now, if this does favour tall athletes, then that move should favour him. He's making sure he's doing that every time. As Luca makes that first move again. Now he's going to try and get up into the groove. I mean, he could fall afoul of not trying to establish himself too high and creep round the corner because he is tall. Okay, he's got... A minute and change left on the clock. Let's see if he decides to change anything and sort of step right up into that corner or if he stays low and...
Come on, Luca. I want to turn my microphone off and cheer him on. Yeah, higher then, more dynamic, but seven seconds left, and yeah, unfortunately, that's... that is going to be the end of the competition for Luca, as it stands. Congratulations to all involved, the route setters especially, who have a particularly tricky job of setting the boulders and deciding on the level of difficulty of the climbs, especially when it's maybe an, a more unknown field of climbers for them. So, yeah, great spread of results there. Difficult round. And eight of these athletes will return this evening to compete in the finals on four more boulders of varying difficulty and with another four minutes of allotted time period per boulder. Yes.